we were saying involves some part of our involvement to work to see that we take we stay focused on the things of God. And yet this one says you have this assurance and this promise. I am there within you and I will help you guard your heart. And then we conclude with this passage from Philippians 4. As Jesus gives us all of these things in the word of God. All of this word is his word. And he said heaven and earth would pass away. That his word would never pass away. Be anxious for nothing. There it is. There's our Baptist word. Be anxious for nothing. We don't have to have a good reason. We can just be anxious for nothing. But that's not what the verse is about. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let the request be made known to God. Now you see that process of prayer. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by communication with God, and praying for others, and praying for as a person who's thankful to God, let these current requests be made known to God. And when you communicate with God in this way, the peace of God, not the peace of David, not the peace of whoever you are, but the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will do what? What does it say? Will... So not only is the Spirit of God there guarding our hearts, but as we communicate and present all these things to God, then the peace of God, which we cannot even imagine or understand, where did it come from? And, and why do I suddenly feel this way about this concern? Why do I have this sense of peace? How is it that this faith has changed, not the circumstance, but the way I relate to it? It blows my mind. It's beyond my comprehension will guard our hearts and our minds. So it's not just going to guard who we are in the spirit, in the inner man. But when we are actually doing these things in communication with God, He is able to take the Word of God and He is able to change our stinking thinking. <laughs> right? Guard our hearts. And our minds. But that sentence is not over. In Christ Jesus. See that's where it happens. If you're not in Christ Jesus. It doesn't happen. It only happens in Christ. If you want to know the reason that you want to. Give your heart and life to Christ. First of all it's not yours. It's his. If you try to hang on to it, you're going to lose. But if you give it up to Him, you'll save it. Next, you're not good enough, no matter how good you are, to deserve heaven. Only by putting your faith and trust in Jesus can you be forgiven of your sin and given eternal life. And as you understand that this process means that you're turning your life over for Him to use and to change whatever He decides, then you're going to want to spend some time communicating with Him diligently. Hearing what He has to say. Following how He wants to lead. So we're going to stay faithful in the church, in our attendance, in our service. We're going to remember God hangs on to us by His Spirit. We're going to remember to be thankful. To pray for others. To know the peace of God will guard our hearts and our minds. The last thing I said is that happens for those in Christ Jesus. There was a time when I was not in Christ Jesus. My life was dominated by certain sin. There were certain things that I did because it made me feel better. And yet I knew that those things were wrong. And yet it was almost like, almost like, I was a slave to those things. No, it wasn't almost like I was a slave to those things. I was a slave to those things. 
And for many of us today, we have not surrendered our hearts and lives to Jesus. We, we're afraid to give up the fight. Oh, we would love to have all the things that God wants to do and, and not have to worry, but to know that God is trustworthy and that He loves us more than we love ourselves and, and that He'll even use the crummy circumstances of our life to bring out something good. That sounds really good, preacher, but you don't understand. I have to be this way. I have to do these things. I have to. And I want you to know, understand, I was there. But I was lying to because I had no sense of what was going to happen when I surrendered my life to the call of God to be saved. And when I did, the first thing He did was to set me free from that bond. When that sin that Jesus had borne on the cross on my behalf was forgiven, that bondage came down. And His Spirit came in, gave me eternal life, and began the process of this making me a new creation in Christ. And old things passing away. Behold, new, all things becoming new. All of a sudden, I wasn't having to do this by myself. I wasn't going to have to try to impress people or God or anything anymore to be good enough to get into heaven because I found out I could do it. So how about you today? You've never really been born again. You've never surrendered to God's work in your life that's called you to be saved. Today is the day of salvation. Why? You got a promise of tomorrow? You have a promise of the rest of today? Right now is the time to be saved. I'm going to give you the opportunity to pray with me. That prayer is not going to be magic and it's not going to be repetitive. It's going to be a prayer that you're going to have to cry out to God from your heart and it's going to have to be genuine between the two of you. But He will save you if you want. But I need to speak to my brothers and sisters in Christ before we do that. If you're a believer today, folks, this guarding our hearts thing it's going to have to become something we study. We're going to have to look at some of these verses. We're going to have to look at some of these 15 or more things that we've talked about and say, am I doing this? Lord, am I doing this? Are you being free to change me? Or am I just trying to maintain the status quo? And I pray during this time of invitation that you would allow God to speak to your heart about what He needs to do you would say yes. Whatever it is, Lord. Whatever you want to change. It doesn't change everything at once normally. Usually pick something that you really don't want him to mess with. Amen? <laughs> he finds the idol that's the shiniest. The one we've been holding the closest. And he says, let's talk about this one. And as that one falls and we find greater freedom in Christ, and the strength to move forward, then He can help us again and again and again. But we have to trust Him. We have to trust Him. To believe that what He's doing in our life is best. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, here we are. You knew we would be here. You knew the person that would be here today that is not a follower of Jesus. They believe Jesus lived. They believe Jesus is a great teacher. They may believe some really nice things, but they have not received you, Lord Jesus, as their one and only way to heaven. They have not come to the place where they would acknowledge that they are a sinner and rebel against you and need your forgiveness. They need for you to come in and change them. Make them a child of God. Right now, right there where they are, from their heart, they're going to communicate with, from their thoughts to you, their desire for you to save them. They would say, yes, Father in heaven, I need to be sent for 
forgiven. I need to be saved. Jesus, I believe you died for me on the cross. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I know that I have lived my life in my own way. And I want you to make me a child of God. Right now. Lord, I thank you for hearing that sincere prayer and to know that they, if they truly pray that, have had a sense of that burden of sin being delivered off of them and, and, and the reality that now they belong to you. And I pray, Lord, that you would help them follow what you desire for every new believer. That they would make it known now that they need to be involved in your kingdom by being baptized, to be involved in the church, they would come and make it known so that we can help them in that process. They would come and share with me even now. Lord, for those of us who are your children, what is it, Lord? What have we allowed into our heart? Our unguarded hearts. What things are in there that shouldn't be? Show us. Help us to confess it. Help us to depend on your strength and your spirit to keep our hearts. Lord, if we need to come and pray, if we need encouragement, if we need accountability, help us to make that known so that that can be taken care of as well. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand? This is your opportunity to respond.
to be so very normal. Monday through Friday, normal. Jose Nader, normal. I uh, work for a property management company. I'm a director of human service. And I thought that was my that was my path. That was my future. Jose did maintenance on weekdays and church on Sundays. That is good. Until he met a pastor with a passion. The most effective way of reaching lost people today is through the planting of new churches. But we, we just marvel at your goodness. Jerry Wade gave Jose a push. I didn't you know that God wanted me to find a church, but uh, that's what God put in my heart. And now, nothing about Jose is normal. My uh, typical Sunday is three services. That's the that's routine. He's planting one church in Cambridge, Maryland. That's my calling. My calling is to, to be a church plant. De las cosechas. He's planting another church in Easton, Maryland. The Lord gives me strength. And it's a different sermon in the church. Yes. Vamos a leer la and he's planting a third church in Seaford, Delaware. Our vision is to keep planting churches. That's what really uh, give me peace and, and, uh, and satisfaction. Now, Jose is a bivocational church planter. So while Monday morning means back to work, it will never again mean back to normal. It's a workload, I think, that would kill a normal man. But he is no normal man. <laughs> Every Monday morning, I always uh, ask, what was my weekend? But knowing that you have uh, people giving and supporting the I Am uh, offering.